every single third party Discord client I've looked at up until this point has had some absolutely critical flaw or has had some really fundamental missing feature that really just stops most users from actually using it. And that's where something like Ripcord comes in. This client is so complete that it even has voice chat support. Now, obviously, it does have its own sort of issues, but those issues aren't going to stop 99% of users actually using it. And in some ways, it actually does more than the official client does. Before we get to anything else, if you want to do things like tag someone, it works same as you'd expect, just press at, it brings up a list of them. We could say go tag Super Cosman and then send an emote. So if we go and press the colon key, it brings up a list of the emotes and we can go and, you know, type something in, it brings something up. Let's start typing in 100. As you can see, brings up the 100 emoji. But if you wanted to have like a bigger list of them, if you go click up here where it has this little coffee symbol, I guess, it brings up a separate window with all of the emoji and emotes you have access to. I presume if you have Nitro, it's not going to just show you the emotes for whatever server you're currently in. It's going to show you every emote you have access to, but I don't have Nitro, so I can't confirm that. So let's say we want to send this one right here. And if we go and press enter, it's going to send the message. Or we can go and upload a file as well by pressing this button up here. It's going to open up a little dialogue here. Or because this is a graphical application, we can just drag a file in and it's going to try to send it. And doing things like editing and deleting messages works exactly as you expect it to. So let's say you want to edit this one right here. We can go and click edit on this and it gives you a separate dialogue to edit this. So let's just put a dot at the end and apply. And as you're going to see, that has now been edited. And if we want to go and delete this, we can just right click on it, click delete, and then it will go and delete that. Works as you'd expect. Now, because I actually have mod permissions in this server because I'm the administrator, I can also go and do that on other people's messages as well. So I can go and say, delete this message right here, or I can pin a message. So you have some server moderation tools as well, but, but that's not all the server moderation. We can go and do things like kick a user or ban a user or change their nickname. And as you can see right here, we have the ability to go and mess with people's roles as well. But I'll get back to this in just a bit. When you first open up this application, you're going to be on the account screen. And from here, what you're going to do is click add account. And you're going to need to put in your Discord authorization token. So I showed you how to get that in, I think, the six chord video. Basically go into your developer tools, copy the token, paste it in here. And then it will connect to your account and it just keeps working from then on. Now, as you can see, it's not just a Discord client. It's also a Slack client as well. Now, I can't comment on the Slack support, but Slack is basically just Discord with a skin anyway. So I presume that it is just as phenomenal as the Discord support. Moving around this application is absolutely lightning fast. So let's say we wanted to go over to something like the patron chat. It loaded basically instantly. If we wanted to go over to, say, the general chat here, instantly. Go over to a channel in a different server, instantly. If we want to jump to any channel in any server, we can press Control K to do that. It brings up this little list down here. Let's go to GNU plus Linux. And as you can see, it loaded basically instantly. Personally, I prefer to move around with Control K just because this list can get a little bit overwhelming when you have a lot of servers in it. And I don't know if you noticed it when I was going through that list, but Control K will also work for DMs as well. Next to any channels, servers, or DMs, there's a little number here that indicates how many new messages there actually are. Now, sometimes this number seems to be a little bit wrong. Sometimes it will just say there's one new message and there's actually 20 new messages. But the official client just has a little dot there anyway, so it doesn't really Really matter. Regardless, it's going to show you there is a new message in that chat. So going back to the server moderation for just a bit, this is what's been keeping me on the official client because I have my Discord server and if I don't have the ability to do things like add new channels, moderate the channels even, just do any of the basic server moderation stuff, I can't switch to a different client. But Ripcord has basically everything that I want to do. So if we go into the channel properties, as you're going to see here, we can go and modify the channel names, we can go and add topics, we can add new channels, we can delete channels, we can move them between the different groups. So let's say you want to go and modify the anime channel here and say this is a weeb chat and apply and go down to anime. As you can see, it now has a new description on it. So if we go over to the next one, we have the roles. So this is actually going to allow you to modify the roles. You can go and change the name, you can change the color, you can change all of the settings for that role as well. You can add new roles, you can delete roles. 
basically everything you'd expect to see from role management. And we saw this one before where we can go and assign a new role to a user. But from here, we can also do things like the general server moderation. So we can go and kick a user from here as well. We can change their username. All of the same stuff that you can do over in this window here. So on to the next one. We can see some information about the invites that were made when it was created, when it expires, who actually made the invite, the code for it, how many times it's been used. So this one right here would be the one that's on my YouTube video. So it seems like 533 people have used it, Jesus. I didn't realize there was that many people in this server. And if there's an invite that you don't want to exist, so for example, someone's using it for a raid or something, you can go and delete the invite with this button down here. And then you have a list of the people who've been banned. I typically don't ban people from my server unless they're being, you know, massive nuisances or everyone in the server hates them. So I've only got two people banned right now, but you can probably guess why they were banned. On to the next one, we have a list of the emotes in the server. I don't like that they're being called emoji. Emoji and emotes are very different things and they should be kept separated. But from here, you can go and add a new emote, you can delete an emote, you can you know modify an emote, things like that. And we even have the audit log. So for example, we have this one down here. So for whatever reason, one of my mods decided to make a cooking channel. I don't know why. I sort of just let my mods do whatever they want. But now we have a cooking channel on my Discord server. And if I wanted to know who made that, I can go and check this log. If we want to go and create an invite to the server, we can go and click this plus up here. We can't set the duration of it. So I presume that it's a lifetime one, but I'm not entirely sure. I would like to see just, you know, a selector there for the duration, but I don't know if that's actually possible with a third party client. And we also have a list of the pin messages in here. As you can see, Australia is not real and some other amusing things like this one right here. I, once again, I don't know why this server exists. So anyway, we can see the mentions I have as well. So this is basically just, you know, your list of notifications. I didn't know that this was a thing in the official client until like a couple of weeks back. Back before that, if I wanted to go find a notification, I would like dig back through the channel rather than going to this list. So I'm really happy I found that this exists and I'm really happy that it came along to this client as well. Sadly, you don't have access to server groups. So if you have a ton of servers, it might start to clutter up your list, but you can go and reorder them by going to the manage discord servers. So let's say you want to put mine at the top. And as you can see, mine is now at the top. So that works as you'd expect. I would like to see groups as well, but it's not a major deal. So what about those extra features? Well, one of them is that you have channel bookmarks. Let's say I really like the general channel in my Discord server. We can go and add that to my favorites or we can go and add that to a new bookmark folder. But I'm going to add it to favorites. And as you can see, it's now in this list right here. Let's go to another one and click on general up here. And it takes us to general. So if you have a bunch of servers you want to be in, maybe manage them with bookmark folders instead of managing them with server folders. And like any good third party Discord client, it has the ability to theme it. So if we go into our preferences, into the style, we can go and set our fonts here. And by default, the theme is gonna look something like this. I feel like that's too bright. So I prefer it to be under my custom theme. And that will give you basically a bunch of different colors you can set. It's not the most granular way to set the color scheme, but it is grouped together nicely. So you can make something that looks pretty good. And you can also go and save and load color schemes with these buttons here. So if someone makes a color scheme that you really like, you can load that into your client. And the last awesome feature we have, you might have spotted it earlier, is this application for some reason has tabbing, which I didn't expect to see in a Discord client. But as you can see, we're on this tab right here. If we go click up here, it makes a new tab and we can go and jump to something like say GNU plus Linux. And as you can see, we have this tab here in GNU plus Linux and this tab here in general. Basically, it's a tabbing system. I don't think I need to explain how tabs work, but I didn't expect to see it in a Discord client. When it comes to the voice chat, there's one caveat to remember, and that's how you actually leave the voice chat. I felt like a bit of a boomer and couldn't work it out. When you go and join a voice chat, the way you go and leave it is by closing this window. I thought there was going to be like something you click on over here that would let you leave it. But no, once you go and close the window on the right hand side, then you actually leave the chat. I don't know why it's like that and why there's not a button. It felt kind of weird to me, but I can kind of get used to it. Now, there are a couple of problems with this, but as I mentioned earlier, none of them are really that major to stop me from using it. So one of them is that GIFs, videos, and music don't actually play in this client, but you can always just go and click on the link and then play it in your web browser. So it's not really that big of a deal. It is a slight annoyance, but I can kind of get used to it. Also, 
with certain emoji fonts on Linux, some emojis break. So I'm using Noto Color Emoji, and if we go over to, I think, the library Discord server, maybe it's library Nomics. Yeah, library Nomics. As you can see, they have some emojis in these groups here, and the names are just completely broken. But this is only a problem with certain fonts, and the Arts Linux Wiki has a list of the ones that actually do work. And you can force it to use a different emoji font from your system font, so it's not really that big of a deal. Also, video chat doesn't work. So voice chat works just fine, but if you need to use video chat, then you can't use Ripcord. I don't think there's a single third-party client that does support video chat. It seems much more complicated to support. It would be nice to see somewhere, but it's not that big of a deal. If I need it, I can always just use the web client. Also, there isn't any spell checking. Now, not a major problem if you're not a child and you know how to spell stuff, but I, I'm terrible at spelling, as you probably noticed from all the mistakes in my thumbnails. And unless I'm missing something, you also can't go back and search for old messages. So this is a bit of a problem for me because sometimes I'll be talking about something relevant to a video topic. For example, replacing your TTY with something that supports frame buffers. That's something I actually want to do a video on and I need to go back and search for where the start of that message chain was and go back and actually look at all of the stuff that was mentioned. When I need to do that though, because it's not really that often where it happens, I can do it in the web client. So. It's annoying, but once again, it's not something that's going to stop me from using this. And there's one thing I have to mention, because if I don't, then someone is going to call me out on it. Ripcord is not open source. It is shareware. Now, the reason why I think this is acceptable in this case is because you're using Discord. And the official client is already proprietary software. So if you're going to replace proprietary software with more proprietary software that's better proprietary software... I don't really see that as being as much of a problem as replacing something open source with something proprietary. So if that's something that I guess you can't really get behind, that's entirely fine. But in this case, I think that it's entirely acceptable. So I could probably keep talking about this software all day because I really, really like this Discord client. I like it so much, in fact, that I actually have gone and replaced my official client with this client here. So I'll leave a link down below to the developer's website where you can go and support them. And hopefully one day this will be basically a perfect replacement for Discord. Maybe one day we'll get video chat. I'm not super hopeful, but it would be really awesome to see happen. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Kulbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan, Montezar, Joseph, Peter D. Rode, Tony Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, and my Coin Tree, which has a list of all the other ways you can support me. I've also got my podcast, which is Tech Over T, available on Library and YouTube for video version, and the audio version is available anywhere you listen to audio podcasts. I've also got this channel available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute as well. So if you want to watch my content on a platform that isn't YouTube, those options are always there. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.